Father, we thank you again for your sweet presence into this place. You have been welcome since the beginning. And you have been lifted up in praises for you rightly deserve the praise. So Father, the blessings have already been pouring down, but we ask for a very specific blessing at this time. As your word is about to be spoken, we ask, Father, in your grace, love, and your mercy, that you'll take full possession of myself and full possession of this room and full possession of everyone here. We ask for an invasion of the spirit of the living God to make himself be known, to make himself be heard, and to make himself be received. I so pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is very easy for a Christian if not careful to plateau in your spiritual walk. It is very easy to plateau because you and I typically at times we come to what's called a level of a level of comfort zone. That level of comfort zone many times allow us to operate with some level of expectation. That means many times we are not caught in surprises because we like that comfort zone because we are comfortable in there. Well, in spiritual life or in your spiritual work at times, it can happen by the fact of falling into a level of routine. Though you have seen the marvelous work of God, though you may have personally experienced moving miracles of God in your life, but it is nonetheless possible to fall into a plateau, to fall captive into a routine, allowing you to go or taking you through a motion, but with no intention. This morning I invite you to look at with me or to experience with me or to go through with me a servant of the Lord known Moses, a man that is no ordinary and a man that I believe to my understanding was functioning through a certain motion, through a certain daily routine until the Lord took him in Exodus chapter 3 and took him to an adventure with the Lord. So we can bring you this morning to the book of Exodus chapter 33, where by this time, the Lord's people are in the, in, on, uh, in the desert, and they have been receiving instruction from Sinai, Mount Sinai, and they come to the point, if you read Exodus 33, so that we can set up the context for our text, you will notice that God is, uh, is making, is providing some direction to Moses, and he, in a nutshell, tells Moses, listen, now it is time to leave from this place. It is time to leave from where we are on Mount Sinai so we can pretty much resume our journey to Canaan. So God tell Moses, son, now it is time to leave. It is time to go. It is time to continue on our journey because from the time they left Egypt and to this point already, they have been by Mount Sinai for a while. It is by Mount Sinai that they received many of God's instructions. It is by Mount Sinai that God was schooling them, telling him who he is as, as a God, telling him what his expectations are, so that as they are making their way through Canaan, they are being instructed in the admonition and in the ways of the Lord. So as they have been receiving instruction, they have been receiving uh, the principles of the kingdom, God says, now it is time to resume our journey. It's time to resume your journey to the promised land because Sinai was all just, just a parking spot. But the destination is Canaan. Listen to me. This location is just a parking stop. This earth is just a parking stop. We are here temporarily. We are here for a shorter time than we imagine, but the destination, the location, the city of dream, the place that you dream of, the vision is to go to Canaan. Amen. Celestial Canaan. Yes. So God didn't lose sight. 
sight of his vision, but sometimes on the journey, he needed to put his people, uh, he needed to let his people sit down and receive instructions because there are instructions that is to be learned in Canaan, but before the people graduated to Canaan, they must receive elementary instructions before they get to advanced instructions. You can't burn the stages with God. You can't. So he tells Moses, listen, it's time to leave. Exodus 33, the first couple of uh, 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 verses. Uh, the first couple of verses. He tells Moses it's time to leave. But God said, I will send an angel with you. And I will not come. Thank you very much for the screen. Uh, verse 2. And he said, I will send an angel with you. Uh, he was what I will do. I will make sure that I take my responsibility as the one who made a promise long ago to take out any enemies on your way to make sure that you are able to get to where I want to take you. And he continues and says in verse 3, but God says, however, I will not go in the midst of you for fear that I consume you because you are a stiff-necked people. Now listen to me. God knows you and I can be stiff-necked. God knows you and I can be insolent. God knows you and I can be even disrespectful. And God knowing that still, he wants to go on with the vision. With a stiff-necked people, he still envisioned to take them there because yes, they are stiff-necked now, but along the way, on the spiritual walk, things can happen. Listen, it is along the spiritual walk that transformation happens. Amen. It is along the spiritual walk yeah. that, that, that restoration happened. Yeah. Yes, these people were taken out of Egypt. Yes, they were pretty much rough, but God understand in taking them there to Canaan, he must first educate them about the principles of the kingdom, but he also understand that these people are who they are right now, but he can envision a future with them, provided that they can get into the program, provided that they can get to the point God wants them, then though they are stiff neck right now, he can still take them to Canaan as the transformation takes place on the road. Listen, my friends, God sees us as we are true, but he sees us better farther than where we are. So where you are right now, yes, this is where we are. We are acclaimed, we are attacked by sin, we have every issues in our lives, but still, God has destination to take us. He has a place for us. So God told Moses, listen, I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Mm. And they have stirred up the anger of the Lord before, so God knows what he's talking about. And this is an act of grace and mercy right there. So God say, I know who I am. I'm not going to let him get on my nerves. So therefore, Moses, it seems that this statement didn't sit too well with Moses. If you continue to read in chapter 33, you will notice that Moses and God had a number of encounters and talk after God made that statement. And Moses and God, they talk, they talk, they talk, they talk to the point that Moses come to the point in his conversation is, Lord, if we push further into, the light doesn't do the preacher uh, uh, justice here, <laughs> but we'll continue anyways. So, so uh, uh, Moses, uh, 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 like, I, like I say, this, this statement didn't sit too well with it because Moses as a servant of God cannot perceive himself moving on without the assurance of God being with him. Yeah. Because God is the one who showed up for him in Midian. God is the one who led him through the plagues in Egypt. God is the one 
who opened the Red Sea. God is the one who provided water through the walk. God has been the one doing everything from the beginning to end. Moses is smart enough to say, uh, 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 uh. I am not going to move on. I am not going to move forward. These people, yes, I am here left leading in, but I understand that these people are led by God, so I will not agree to move on without the assurance that God is in the boat. Amen. Listen. Now, you, 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 you and I got to have some spiritual discernment. Moses is not about to move with the people. So Moses decides to have an audience. The, the Bible says he goes to the tabernacle outside of the camp. Why did he go outside of the camp? I believe because when he goes outside of the camp in, a, in his own little tent or tabernacle, it's because God already said that if I was to come in the midst of the people, what will happen? They will be consumed. Therefore, he's having a conversation with the Lord outside of the camp in a particular tent, allowing God to come down and talk to him because the Bible says God spoke face to this guy. So Moses understood what's going on and what has, what's at stake. And in the back and forth of that conversation, when we get further down, Moses, let's, stay, let's take it further down um, to the verse, to verse 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, Let's, let's go back to verse 16, 15, 16, right? I'm sorry. All right. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. So Moses made it standing. Remember, God said, I will not walk in the midst of you for fear of consuming you because you are stiff necked folks. And Moses is pleading with God. And God to the point and said to him, if thy prayer, and Moses come to the, come to the point and said, and, and, and it's good for us to see that quote, if thy presence go not with me, leave us here. Yes, right. Listen, it's, it's important for a Christian to have the assurance that God is moving on with you. Yes. It, it, it's almost dangerous even if I dare say, say, little. If you are moving into a venture, if you are moving into a certain particular direction, if you are considering a certain way to go, if you are in, in, if you are contemplating a, a business, if you are contemplating an, an exercise, if you are contemplating a decision, as Proverbs tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean and lean. assurance that the Lord will be with you, to get the assurance that the Lord will lead you, though the vision may not be 100% clear when you get God's assurance, because after all, it is a work of faith, but you have some basic assurance that the Lord is with you on the way. Amen. 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 Moses said, Moses said, Moses said unto him, if thy presence is not with me, we are not leaving here. Verse 16. For where shall it be known, where it shall be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, that is Moses, it is not in that thou goes with us. It is not that I go with us that we know we have found favor in your eyes. He continues, so shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are up on the race of the earth. So he understood that it is the grace of God which, which provides provisions on the way that will enable him and the people to make their journey. Yes. It's a dangerous thing to think you can make a spiritual journey on this planet mm -hmm. to kill him without God. It is dangerous. And he continues in verse 17, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace. Praise 
in my sight. Now we're talking. So Moses here seems to be gaining some ground. Moses here seems to be making some progress because God already said that he's not going to walk in the midst of some stink neck folks, but God in it, Moses in his intercession, Moses in his coming in between God and the people, Moses was able to intercede as, as a result of his intercession, God said to Moses, thou has found favor in my sight. Amen. And he says, I know thee by name, my God. <laughs> ah! It's got to be a different I know. God in his omniscience knows everything. But here it's not talking about general knowledge of every single individual on this planet. It's got to be more. Therefore, since God had been in an intimate talk with Moses, says God, and, and this is not something that started when went on the journey to, to Canaan. No, no, no. As we read in Exodus chapter 3, it was Moses' habit during his time in, in Midian to go ahead while he's watching the sheep of, of his, of his father-in-law to go in talks with God, to go in conversation with God, to develop a relationship with God, to the point God decided to come out of the unknown and reveal himself to Moses, to the burning bushes that wasn't burning. So Moses is someone who is accustomed to having a personal intimate relationship with God and for God to come to the point he says, son, I know you. My friends, I want to be known by God. Say, I know Brother Friendling right here. I know my sister right here. I know my sister right here. I know my servant Moses. Just like he said in the story of Job. He says, I know Job. How do I get to the point where God says he knows me? Well, the only way you can get to the point is to have an intimate, personal, connected relationship with this living God. not the regular relationship. Not the regular. I'm talking something deeper. Deeper. Something where you may get up in the morning and you sit in the presence of God. You say, my God, I'm here. What do you want from me? What songs I sing to you in worship today? I'm not going to open my book to choose a song, no. Your spirit tells me what to sing for you. I don't have a program prepared for you. I let you dictate the worship. I let you lead the worship. I let you lead the Bible study. I let you lead the prayer meeting. Just like you lead everything in my life. Lead this prayer session. Lead this devotional. Lead what's about to happen here. Lead. Amen. 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 And you sit down in a position of openness. And what happens is that songs of praise start coming to your mind. And as they come, you sing. Sometimes you can jump from one song to another one because the Spirit of God is saturating your mind with different songs, your mind with different songs. And at time you pause and you utter a prayer, you find yourself praying for people you didn't have any intention of praying for because it is the Spirit of the living God that is leading you through that it is not you who have a prepared program to give to the Lord, but it is the Lord Amen. who's leading this thing. Experience that. It's a wonderful thing. You just come in the morning, you sit in a spirit of openness. And you say, God, lead. What should I say for you? Why should I sing to lift you? What do you want to hear today? I'm telling you. 
it will revolutionize your spirituality it will revolutionize your your devotional life i'm not telling you not to have things to talk to the lord about but i'm telling you to allow lord to lead this thing and not you coming and executing a well prepared written down program So you call upon him, he comes, what do you want me to say for you? Amen. So the Bible tells us that God told Moses, I know thee by name. I don't know many individuals in the Bible that it says that about them. I don't know many. Daniel, yes. Moses, absolutely, but I don't know too many. And the Bible says that, we continue here on verse 18, my dear. Thank you. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Listen, Moses, I have a problem here with this passage. Uh, if we're talking about seeing the glory of God, I, I believe he's, that Moses is one of the servants of God who have seen more than enough the glory of God. Uh, God gave him a first view uh, of his glory uh, when in the burning bush. God gave him another multiple views of his glories to the different plagues that went in and happened in Egypt. God gave him uh, different views of his glory when uh, God told him to, to talk or touch the rock and he touched the rock or, or turned the water from Meribah into sweet water and he put that piece of wood in the water and the water became drinkable there I say potable and he was it was Moses who walking with God saw the opening of the Red Sea where he was able to walk down the highway of the Red Sea with the Lord Moses what else do you want to see there I say brother friend Moses you've seen enough you've seen things that I've never seen you've seen things I've just only heard about Moses you've seen what else is there to be seen and that is where you and I get trapped. There is always more to be seen. There is always more to experience. There is no way. There is always more to encounter. There is no always more to live with God. God, like the word say, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord's goodness doesn't have a bottom. Amen. Bottomless. So Moses said to God, show me your glory. Yes. But my man, you've seen it off. He just came down in a cloud to you. Yeah. In other words, what's happening to Moses? Moses, I like this man. Moses said, listen, I want more. Amen. You've seen it, you've done a lot, that's true, but I want more. You have done a lot, that's true, but I want to see more. You, 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 you've done great things through me, but I want more. In other words, I want to believe that Moses wasn't just satisfied with what he had seen, we had with what he had experienced before. Moses says there is more to be seen in the Lord, and I want to dig deeper in the depth. My goodness of the Lord. My friends, listen, those who dig in the Lord, those who dig in their prayer life, those who dig in the study of the word, those who dig in their principle, those who dig in intimacy, those who dig, dig, and dig are those who will see more. Listen to me. You and I can easily get caught up. We usually can plateau. Caught up in that routine. When we reach a spiritual ceiling, where God doesn't want anybody to reach a spiritual ceiling. Oh, you need you and I need to step into, into the infinity, if I dare say, to the limit God will allow us to go. Moses says to the Lord, show me. Thy glory. Yeah. What do you want the Lord to show you? Mm. What do you want him to show you? Show me your glory. Yes. 
There are times in my personal devotional life I'm sitting in a in a in a in a, in a, in a very personal time, 4, 4 35 in the morning, nobody's bothering, and I'm sitting there and I'm singing, and at times, you know, you can you 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 see tears flowing, you 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 feel the Lord, the Spirit of God coming over you, and you cannot even contain yourself. Let alone ask to see God's glory. This man is asking God something, uh, something great. In verse 19, and God answers this man and said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. It will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. So God says, I have the autonomy or the authority of the prerogative mm -hmm. <laughs> to do what I'm about to do. Yes. That it shows you that it is something unique. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't usually see that in a lot of places in the Bible. God made the size to show his glory. But this, he's doing it as a, as a result of a request for him to show his glory. There's a difference. God decided to show his glory to, I, to, to, to Isaiah. God decided to show his glory to John the Revelator in Revelation chapter 5. Without him asking, without Isaiah asking. But here, Moses is asking God to show me your glory. This man is not just spiritually thirsty. In my country, there is a word called saf. Asian Creole. What does that word mean? Saf mean you have a hunger that is beyond any kind of hunger. Extreme hunger. That hunger in my country, they call it the Clorox hunger. You know what Clorox does, right? When it gets to a stain, what does it do? It goes into that stain. There is a chemical process that happened. And that stain can be removed. So there is a level of Clorox hunger, Google Clorox that they will say in my language, that it is so deep that you probably cut through your stomach. Just want to give you some kind of an image of what that means. So, after all this men have seen, he must have had the Clorox hunger. And Moses and God said, continue in verse 20, and he said, Thou cannot see my face, for there shall no, for there shall no one see my face and live. Moses, listen, I'm about to do something exceptional. But here is the reality. What you are asking is out of the ordinary. What you are asking is not usually done. But I need to remind you of the principle that still you are a man. No matter how you've seen many things I have done, no matter how I have used you in the past. No matter how, what many things I have done with you or through you, you are still a man. Okay. You know why I'm saying that? Because no sin in men can stand in the presence of God. So he said to Moses, listen, thou shalt no man see me and live. I'm talking to you, Moses. No man shall see me and live. But, keep going. Here's what I'm about to do. And the Lord said, that is the Lord said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do uh, something for you here. Uh, I see that you are thirsty for more. Uh, I see that you want to see more. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, 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 I'm delighted by that request. In other words, I, I, I dare to say that Moses is trying to get God, possibly, please forgive me, out of his comfort zone. That is things he doesn't usually re reveal is about to reveal. Are you following me, uh, 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 saints of God? Are you following me? The, the, the servant of God has 
asked him something very irregular. Uh, the, the servant of God asked him something unusual, inhabitual, and they are saying something odd or even weird. But God said, listen, I told you, no man can see me and live. However, I'm going to do something for you. You, you get me out of, of my comfort zone, Moses. You, 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 you're touching me in a very special way. Uh, just like when you have a child, mothers, and the child comes to you and start putting their hands on you and say, mommy, I want this, or daddy, I want this, and you feel some kind of way, and you say, you know what, I'm going to do it for you. Yeah. So Moses, God said to Moses, verse 21, behold, there is a place by me, my God, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. You continue, 22. And it shall come to pass that while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hands while I pass by. <laughs> He said, Moses, I'm about to do this, but there are certain restrictions, my man. There are certain things that's going to have to remain. You're going to have to stand over here, but standing over here is not just sufficient. I mean, you're going to have to be by the right. You're going to have to be by the cliff of the right. Now I have news for you. If you can think that this rock is an ordinary rock, but me, I do not think that this is an ordinary rock. Why? I will tell you why. Why? Because the only reason we come to the Father, the only way we mediate to the Father, the only way we have access to the Father is through Jesus the Son, because we learn through the Bible that Jesus is the rock. Since Jesus is the rock, Moses has no authority to see the glory of God in and of himself because still he is a man born in sin, raised in iniquity. Though he is striving, he is empty, he is moving on, he's getting to a high degree of relationship of good God. He is still limited by the fact that he is born in sin and raised in iniquity. So God says, I'm going to solve this problem. I'm going to take care of It is only through Jesus we are sanctified. It is only through Jesus we can talk to God and plead for mercy and plead for grace and plead to see his glory and intercede for our brothers and sisters. God understood that this man could not see him just naked like this. He needed a covering for this man. But before providing the covering, he needed to put this man in the cleft of the rock. And that's why. Is Jesus. Yes. So therefore he told Moses, listen, I know the gospel make you feel good this morning. I'm sure God is blessing you. It is true. Amen. He blessed me also when I saw this passage. Amen. Yeah. Listen, he said, Moses, listen, I'm going to do it for you. But this is the formula, my friend. You have to stay on the rock. Yes. And that's why the song says, we build on the rock, the solid rock, the rock of so this rock, my friend, is Jesus. And the Lord said, I'm going to put you by the rock. Cleft of the rock. And when I pass by, because you are under the rock, because you are in the cleft of the rock, I will hide my face. You won't see my face. Since no one can see the face of God, no human being can see the face of God and live, I will hide my face. But as I'm passing by, you won't see my face. But as I'm moving out, I will move my hands from your sight, and you'll be able to see my back. That means God has a spiritual body, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. And like that, Moses, spiritual thirst. Clorox thirst, or Clorox hunger, was satisfied. Not only did he get the assurance that God is going to be with him, yes. but God gave him a bonus mm -hmm. by allowing him to see 
something very few men have seen in flesh and blood. So what do you want the Lord to show you today? Moses said, show me your glory. And in the text, you have to notice the glory of God is associated with the goodness of God. We give God great praise because of who he is. We certainly can stop ourselves from giving him praise because of what he's done. Because of his goodness to the children of men. Like the song say, oh, give thanks to the Lord. For his goodness to the children of men. What do you want to see? What do you want the Lord to show you today? What do you want? So you can say, Brother Freddy, I wasn't ready for this today. Well, it's not just a today exercise. It's not just a today's request. It is not a today's. Today can be the beginning of you going and entering a little deeper into your relationship and ask God to reveal you things about himself. It's possibly a heard to some men. What do you want? We need to break out of that comfort zone. We need to break out of that ceiling. Relationship ceiling. And husband and wives know this, that there is a point where you get to real relationship. It's just the motion. The relationship is moving, but it's reached a ceiling. It's going like this. It's working. It's on. We love each other. But there seems to be a plateau. You know what I'm talking about if you've been married long enough. We want to be with you, but we reach a plateau. And it takes something out of the ordinary to warm the heart at times. Maybe some flowers, maybe a date, maybe something else. To break out of the ordinary. Bring out something a little special here and there. Moses asked God to show me your glory because he believed that's what he needed or he wanted at that time. And he wasn't shy about it. And the Lord, for some reason, felt himself obligated to show his glory to his man servant. Somehow. And the Lord made provision for Moses to his glory. And that provision is only through the rock. Amen. Christ Jesus, our God. Amen. Oh, I dare to share you today, if you want to experience some level of closure, some level of spiritual breakthrough, some level of spiritual transformation, taking us out of the ordinary routine, of the ordinary plateau here and there. You go, it's like you're trying to go up, you're hitting that ceiling, but you need to break through yeah. that ceiling. Yes. There I say, it can only happen through Jesus. Yes. Moses made a radical request. Radical, radical request. And God granted him that request with some limitations, of course. He has got to show him his glory. Showing God's glory will mean that God reveals his face as well. But let me take you back now as we finish the book of Revelation. Because the Revelation Revelation says us when we are transported up in the heaven, we will see God face to face. Because that's what the song says, face to face with Christ my Savior. There is an opportunity for God to see God face to face. But it is not going to happen here. It will not go to happen here. It will not happen here. It will happen when we step by God's grace.
grace and mercy and love yes. in his glory. Yes. Don't you want to be there, my friend? Yes. Don't you want to go there, my friend? Yes. To live, to see God's glory, to feel God's glory, to experience God's glory. What we're getting on this planet is just little tidbits of this glory. When a miracle happens, it's just little tidbits of that glory. But there is great glory beyond the skies that awaits the saints of God. May God bless you. As by His grace, by His grace, we continue through Christ's power and the Spirit of the living God power to strive into the mark, to strive into that time. When his glory shall appear, when we shall see him face to face. May God bless each and every one of you. Amen. 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 Amen.